Yeah, I think that's the key. That's the key thing you've said there. Uh, in Australia, uh, it is so different when you tour there. Um, everything that goes with it, the atmosphere, the crowd. Although it was like an own game for India in the semi-final <laughs> at times in Sydney, um, but they, they play an aggressive brand of cricket, uh, and with the pitches and the pace of their bowlers, it just suits um, Australia uh, so much more than it did India. Uh, if that semi-final was in India, um, I would have fancied India to win that game because it would have taken out the sting. What I did yesterday, I, I thought it was the potency of the Australian bowling. It was just that little bit. They had too much pace and bounce for the Indian batsmen, and they had to get past Stark, Johnson, and Hazelwood. They bowled beautifully, all three of those. Now, a big worry for Australia was going to be their their fourth and fifth bowler, which it proved. I mean, that was their weakness. Uh, Fulton had dragged it back at the end there with a couple of wickets, but India were out of the game by then, and that was down to two things. The bowling of Australia up top against India and the captaincy of Michael Clark. who I thought, yeah, everybody's going to question whether he should be in the side for his batting at the moment, but for his captaincy alone, and I said this, I think, to you at the start of the series, He's probably the best captain in the old World Cup, and he proved that yesterday. Some of his fielding positions, some of his changes were absolutely superb. And another factor is when you look at the teams, this Indian team at present have got some good players, very, very good cricket players. But when it comes down to facing bowling of that quality, they really... It, they struggle strike rate. Do you know what I mean? They can't take the game away from Australia. As in Australia, the Australian batsmen, all of those players can adapt and have unbelievable strike rates. You only have to look at Johnson at the end when he did. What an innings he played when he came in right at the end. Nine balls he faced for 20 odd runs. And I don't think, other than Dhoni, India had any batsmen who could do that. No, I agree. It's frustrating when you're a player. When you're a player and you know when you turn up at a cricket ground, the toss is so vital on winning that game. And it can, whether the pitch is used, it's been a used pitch and it's dry, you know you have to win the toss and back because you know by the time you've played 100 overs, it's going to be almost impossible if you've got a good spin of bowling against you. And it could, it would have been, could have been well different yesterday. I said this when we talked the other day about Sydney as a pitch. If it is a real nice sunny day, you have to bat first. Um, and it's so important. It makes a big difference. And it did for Australia. Um, I think a good score on that pitch would have been around the 290 mark. So for him to get 320 um, was probably just a little bit too much. 328, they got a little bit too much for India. They made a good effort of it. Um, I mean, the early wickets were a big loss. Dhoni and Rahan tried to rescue the situation, but against that bowling attack, they knew they had one chance, and that was against their fourth and fifth bowler of Australia, which is going to be a concern for them. Um, it, it, is, it is a concern for them, but because their bowlers, front-line bowlers, have been so dominant, they haven't been put under pressure yet. But you're right, the toss of the coin um, in day-night matches can sometimes be a huge factor, and, and I think it was on that situation, especially at Sydney. I think in Adelaide, I don't think it would have made a difference. Uh, in Melbourne, I don't think it would have made a difference. But in Sydney, I think it definitely did.